The coronavirus outbreak has hit emerging markets, traditionally a higher return, higher risk asset class, which has suffered as investors have sought safe haven assets. Some emerging markets, like Russia and Mexico, are also big oil exporters, so they've been damaged by the recent collapse in oil prices. This has been a lot for emerging markets to take all at once. As a result, EM currencies have plunged against the dollar, whilst the premium that investors demand to hold EM assets have soared. The shock, of course, is not an emerging market-centric one, but a global one. And we're seeing a global effort from central bankers and policymakers around the world adding new record amounts of monetary and fiscal stimulus to try and avert a deep and prolonged recession. Like in the US and in Europe, emerging market monetary and fiscal authorities have also injected liquidity into local markets and passed stimulus packages as they try to mitigate the shock. Recent sales of emerging market bonds have been indiscriminate, impacting not only the at-risk issuers that have little policy flexibility, but also some of the more high-quality issuers with strong balance sheets. At one point in March, the market had become overwhelmed by one-way selling pressure. Roughly $40 billion rushed out of emerging market bonds in the span of a few weeks, which is an unprecedented number. These dislocations have led to losses but have also lifted the risk premiums and the yields to rarely seen levels before. And this opens the door to opportunities in our view. Spreads are at near all-time wides on dollar-denominated bonds and potentially compensate investors for a level of default that has never occurred before. We believe that the repair will take time. EM is an outer perimeter asset and the system must repair itself from the inside out first in the US Treasury market, then in the AAA-rated US mortgage market, and then in the high-quality US corporate market. Moreover, the uncertainty is still paramount, and the effects of the lockdown may be longer term than what we initially thought. Some emerging market issuers will default, and low-quality oil exporters are particularly vulnerable. Therefore, over the near future, we favor dollar-denominated, high-quality emerging market sovereigns and corporate issuers, especially those with strong balance sheets. Most of the issuers now operate with low leverage and excess cash reserves, which are held by central banks, sovereign wealth funds, and so-called rainy day funds, precisely because they have navigated numerous past crises. In emerging markets, it's interesting to think about the longer term once the dust settles on this current episode. Local EM markets are one of the few places left that still offer old normal levels of yield ranging from between 4 to 8% on mostly investment grade rated bonds. This stands in sharp contrast to yields in Europe and in Japan, but also now in the US. As volatility continues to subside, we think investors can move out of the risk spectrum towards local markets, where currencies look cheap in our opinion, and local yields still remain elevated compared to developed market yields. Above everything, as ever, emerging markets is all about differentiation across countries, and across issuers, and about having a long-term view.